am here in my new studio or office or whatever you want to call it and Tyler and I are in North Carolina instead of Illinois so we just moved to our forever home and this is definitely a dream come true in many ways and so this home was built by our neighbor who is outside with the tractor right now I don't know if you can hear that so our neighbor his name is Carsey and he built this home in the 70s with his father so he was just a child and there was like a newspaper article on it and they put a lot of cool custom stuff into this home the stones that you see behind me were taken from a local quarry and there's just so much character and like I said it's a dream come true in many ways those are all good things but I always have to keep it real with you guys this is very stressful we have five dogs and Tyler is building a fence, a big fence, a big area for them to live in. He's gonna build a custom dog home. But until they have that to play around in, we can't just let them free roam. Um, four of our five dogs are Huskies, and Huskies love to run. Even if they love their home, they will run because that's what they are born to do. Moose, my Bernese Mountain Dog, he doesn't run away. He'll stick by my side, but the other Huskies will run. Bear is uh, the alpha and he will take off and he has already escaped. Ran almost a mile down that way with the other dogs following him and as you can imagine that is nerve wracking. If we lost one of our dogs, if a car hit them or if they just ran away and, and got lost, it would just be so heart shattering. So we are sleeping in the finished basement with them right now. We have them hanging out in the big warehouse that we have or in the basement during the day, but we still have half of the trailer to unload. There are a bunch of boxes on the other side of the door right now, and Tyler's building the fence. He's gone right now picking up a trencher for the fence today. There are a lot of stresses that come with moving, as you guys know, and something that's really been helping me is just to focus on the blessings. I don't want, I don't want the enemy to steal the joy of this season. Yes, it's stressful to have a lot of stuff to do, but there's always a lot of stuff to do. That's life. And it's really cool to build a new fence. And I know even though it's so much hard work, Tyler loves to build things and I know he's having fun with it. So I'm very grateful. We're both very grateful. I thank you guys for the prayers, even just getting down here safely with a 28 foot trailer and five dogs was an answer to a prayer. That was nerve wracking. Um, the trailer we have was fish tailing almost the whole time and getting very close to like semis passing Tyler and he got the hang of driving it, but going through those mountains in West Virginia were, it was kind of scary. And I am also 29 weeks pregnant today, so third trimester and I'm definitely feeling emotional. And that's not a bad thing. Thankfully, I am rooted in Christ I do not identify with my feelings. My feelings do not define me, but they still are valid. You know, they're still there and I still have to cope with them. So I find that my emotions are stronger. I have felt senses of loneliness and feeling overwhelmed, understandably, but overall, I'm just very grateful for this season. So that's my very raw and real update. That was longer than I expected, but whatever. Pregnancy is going very well. I am, like I said, 29 weeks, very much showing. David is growing every single day and I'm feeling really good. I don't get nausea or heartburn still. I've literally only gotten one day of nausea this entire pregnancy, which is crazy to me. And one day of heartburn, it was actually at night, I was trying to go to bed and there was heartburn. But I'm doing really well. I have not established a doctor, doctor here yet because I have to switch insurance. So once my insurance switches over and I find a new plan, I will find a doctor, get in there ASAP, and then look into a doula. So a doula is something that Tyler really didn't want to do. He didn't want to be replaced. And then, really funny, at my last retreat, my fall retreat, Ken and Nisha Berry are good friends of ours. And so Tyler went up to give Nisha a hug and she said, you need to go talk to him. And so Ken took Tyler aside, like away from the whole crowd of people. And, and then shortly after that, Tyler was like, we can look into a doula. And so I was like, what? I thought you were totally against it. And he said, Dr. Barry talked to me and just explained that it's not what I think it's gonna be. It's that she's not gonna replace me. And 
basically Dr. Barry was able to convince Tyler to be a little more open-minded with a doula. I think a lot of misunderstanding is that a doula will like basically take away the role of your husband supporting and helping you, whereas a doula can actually help your husband to support and help you and give him more direction to be that support. And that would be very good for me as well. So we're not set on that, but we will, we will look into it once I find an insurance plan. I believe that doulas fall under coverage of medical insurance in North Carolina. I was just looking that up the other day. So we'll see whatever God's plan is. I'm excited for that. So today I wanted to talk about something that I heard a couple weeks ago, which was don't live out of the wounds of your past. And that really struck me because I did that for a long time. I'm not sure how many of you viewers and subscribers know about my past. I know you probably know I was very sick and underweight and had over 10 autoimmune diseases and healed and I eat only meat. But what I don't talk about as much, I talked about it in my book a lot, was the heartbreak that I went through shortly before everything went really downhill or like right when it did. So in 2017, I was diagnosed with chronic Lyme disease and that was one of my first diagnoses. Right before that, prior to that, 2016, I was working full-time in real estate, engaged and planning our wedding basically on my own <clears throat> because this person I was engaged to, we both weren't ready to be married, I don't think. You know, it was a pure love but we both were still just so young and had so much to learn and I don't think he was really ready. And anyways, he just wasn't, he just like stopped showing up. Like, let's go to Costco, he doesn't show up. Let's um, go do this wedding planning thing, he doesn't show up. And, and it just came to the point where it's like, where's my fiance? Like, is this even happening anymore? And around that same time, I started running into suffocation attacks, literally suffocation attacks. So. My fists would clench tight, my arms would be glued to my side. I would be like this, basically curling into a ball, not able to breathe. And I would have to go to the emergency room where they said it was anxiety. And then they would give me morphine, make that make sense. And that happened on a multitude of occasions. And it just became so stressful dealing with this that I had to move back in with my parents. And I knew that something was deeply wrong with me. And I knew that the, it, I'm really emotional. I knew that the engagement was going to fall apart and I was so scared. And when I get scared like that, I push people away because I'm afraid of being alone. And I was afraid of being abandoned, which I already felt like because he wasn't showing up or anything like that. And so I just became a monster <laughs> and I pushed him away. And I just got really nasty and I was afraid of whatever was happening to my body. I was having panic attacks, these suffocation attacks. And I had already been dealing with mood disorders and chronic pain for, you know, 10 years at this point. You know, taking Adderall, Ambien, Clonazepam, taking birth control for my acne, just a whole bunch of different things. And just trying to balance on the teeter-totter of falling apart, hormones, adrenals, and everything. So around that time, I moved back in with my parents and I got off of my medications. And that's when I started working with functional medicine doctors because the prescription medications weren't doing anything anymore. Like I said, Adderall, Clonazepam, and Ambien for over 13 years total I took them and high dosages. Like I was on 80 milligrams of Adderall when I got off of it. And I just barely felt like I was just barely getting by. I was just taking speed during the day and knocking myself at night, knocking myself out at night, but I still had bad insomnia even taking these. And so, so yeah, I moved back in with my parents. The engagement fell apart largely because I pushed him away. And again, I pushed him away because I was heartbroken and afraid. And I'm not just talking about this to talk about it, I'm talking about it to make a point here. That season was one of the most painful seasons of my life. It still is a wound inside me. That feeling of abandonment still affects me to this day. And even before that, I was engaged once before this person and I was cheat on, cheated on in our, in our own apartment. And so there again is abandonment. 
And so this is just a deep wound for me. And then, so I moved back in with my parents and no one understood what was going on with me. You know, does she have an eating disorder? Uh, she's on a ketogenic diet, she's losing weight. She must be an eating disorder. I was held against my will in an eating disorder unit. Most of my friends eventually stopped talking to me. Like I couldn't, I didn't hang out with people. I was too sick. I was bed bound for a season, for real bed bound. I was having non-epileptic seizures, couldn't drive for a season. And finally I was diagnosed with the C. diff infection, which is why I had lost so much weight. I couldn't gain weight to save my life. But even still after that diagnosis, people still thought I had an eating disorder. Even a ketogenic neurologist for children who I went and saw because I was like, surely this person will understand the value of a ketogenic diet. And even they said, you have an eating disorder. And I'm like, you know, I, it was again, this wound of abandonment even my doctors and so I was in such a dark season I, I eventually moved out of my parents home was really just trying to survive and so I met someone in eHarmony moved to Illinois because I figured doctors say I'm gonna not live past 30 years old I may as well try to find someone to enjoy life with before I die that person that I met ended up being a narcissist so I had to find another place to live and eventually I found my husband who runs Airbnb out of his home and he said, hey, I have an extra bonus room if you would like to come stay because I reached out to strangers. And so that's how Tyler and I met. And we didn't date for years after I had met him. He thought I was crazy. <laughs> and then I confirmed that later on. Just this like theme of abandonment is a deep wound for me. and. I have to catch myself, even still to this day, to not live out of the wounds of the past. And the way for me to do that is to use the Word of God, which is a weapon, when I feel like I'm getting targeted and just totally beat up by the enemy. Tyler and I love each other very, very much. We have a great marriage that has been so blessed by God, but every marriage has its ups and downs. And there have been instances in this relationship, as all relationships go, where I don't feel supported. And that feeling of abandonment comes up. And that feeling of wanting to push away comes up. And I have to be very um, alert and on guard because I know that'll come up. It's a defense mechanism. It's a, you know what, I'm just going to push you away because I really don't want to be heartbroken again. And I think a lot of people can relate to that feeling. It's not like a super special feeling. I'm pretty sure most people understand what I'm talking about here. So one of the scriptures that I use when I feel that way is in Isaiah 43:19. I think it is. Yes. Isaiah 43:19. I'll start at 18. Forget the past. The Lord said, forget what happened long ago. Don't think about the past. I am creating something new. There it is, don't you see it? I have put roads in deserts, streams in thirsty lands. I mean, Isaiah 43 is just such a beautiful chapter. But that part in particular comes to mind when I start feeling abandoned. And so I want to invite you to think about what are some deep wounds from your past? What are the feelings that come up when you recall those wounds? What does the word of God say about those feelings? So I'll say it again. Number one, what are some deep wounds from your past? Number two, what are the feelings that are evoked when you think about those feelings? What feelings are brought up? And number three, what does the word of God say about those feelings? If you can just focus on and memorize those scriptures and use them, when you start feeling those feelings, you can become a warrior and a conqueror. If I didn't have truth to fight all of my feelings, I would be a victim to my feelings. But I have the truth. So your feelings are always valid. You know, perception is reality, they're valid, but they're not always true. And again, like I said at the beginning of this video, you shouldn't identify with your feelings. If I just, you know, succumbed to my feelings when I was feeling abandoned, 
I would push away every person in my life because every good relationship has a testing point. That's what makes relationships good. <laughs> That's how you build trust is when you, you know, go through something hard and then you come together again. And I just wouldn't even be willing to give that a chance because I have been so heartbroken in the past by others. And so instead of falling into my feelings and going into that deep hole and that, that downward spiral, I seek the truth and I use it. Not only do I just read it and think about it, I speak it over my situation. So, I mean, very often times I will just think, behold, I'm doing a new thing. Or see, I'm doing a new thing. I'm making a way in the desert. That really gives me hope. God knows everything that you will go through. He knows everything you have been through. He knows the broken places of your heart and he wants to repair them. And he will. And no one else can. So I highly encourage you to seek the word of God. And if this video has you know, brought forward any hard emotions or deep wounds for you, I just pray that the Lord will show you that there is hope in that and that there is healing for that. There is nothing that God cannot heal. God loves to use our brokenness and turn it into something beautiful. But you have to be able to let him. And that means being vulnerable. So if you have any input or comments, or if you can relate, I would love to hear down below. This is a really uh, more of a life coaching video. And so I hope it helps someone out there. See you next time.